Good morning, folks. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Hopefully we are live. Live. Yes, we are. Whoops. Ahoy, Aiden. Hey, Charco. Hey, Pure Luck. Good morning, guys. I'm not sure if Twitch is working. Weirdly, it doesn't say it's uh, streaming. Sometimes Twitch takes a while though. Notification squad. Yeah. Hey, Neil9000. I still don't know why uh, we got these weird spaced out comments. I think Restream must be having an issue. I'm not sure. The other thing is, it doesn't look like Twitch is working, which is wonderful. What is going on? Offline. No, I'm not. Oh, it says live. There we go. So we are live on Twitch now. Good. Hey, Dave. Hey, Neo. Good morning, folks. So I figured we were we would work on some performance things. I have some things, uh, or one particular thing that's rather involved in mind that could significantly help big box performance some more. Um, so I want to go ahead and tackle that. Um, and we need to wrap up uh, some stuff from last week as well. The controller buttons um, aren't all there for the uh, attract mode stuff we added. So... A few things to do. Um, sorry, I never got a beta out last week. I got into the uh, upcoming project, um, the surprise project again, and I forgot to put the beta out. So forgive me on that. Um, but we will wrap that up and get it out today. Centenary University. Did I say that right? Centenary University. Interesting. Can you build an option in the game edit that allows for AHK auto hotkey to, spe to specific games? I don't know what you mean by that, unfortunately. Hey, humanoid, good morning. Can you build an option in the game edit that allows for AHK to specific games? Why am I getting that message from two separate people? Is that spam? I don't know. Hey, Quad. Good morning. I don't know what's going on there with the uh, with Latin six two five. Anyways, well, let's go ahead and pray, guys, and then we'll get straight into it. Since I'm always forgetting to pray. Lord, thank you for uh, this project, and thank you for everybody here, and thank you for another opportunity to um, just enjoy being with each other and grow this project, and uh, pray that you would help us all to support each other, um, keep the trolls at bay, uh, help me be productive, um, and get stuff done, and just be with all, all of us uh, this morning and for the rest of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so let's get going. Thank you, Pure Luck. 
Yeah, I think I've worn this hat once before, but probably only once or twice, and it's been a while. Also, uh, I think I've been to doing too much yelling <laughs> lately as a dad, <laughs> because my voice isn't all the way here, if, if you could probably, I don't know, you might be able to tell, you might not be able to tell, but anyways, so hopefully my voice lasts, lasts, there we go, uh, for the few hours, we'll see. Anyways, so performance. Now, one of the things with WPF that has been a major irritation is that um, I haven't, and if you don't know, WPF is the Microsoft technology that provides um, the theming aspects to Big Box. And um, basically, it's the method we use to display and render pretty much all of Big Box. And uh, one of the um, oh, I got you, Latin. Uh, one of the last remaining irritations that I hadn't gotten past is that uh, I wasn't able to load images in a background thread for a very long time. Uh, and I finally figured that out recently. Um, and obviously, if we load an image, load images, all images in the background thread, that is going to significantly help performance because then it's not fighting for the UI uh, thread performance. Anyways, so uh, I recently figured out there is a way to do that. You just have to go deeper uh, into the image loading code. It's really stupid uh, how they did it. Basically, the image object is not um, thread safe. Uh, so you can't use an image object. You have to use lower level methods in order to load up the images. Um, and in fact, you have to manually even check whether you're loading up a JPEG or a PNG uh, and stuff like that. So there's, but that's a trick that I, I learned recently. And what that means is everywhere we load images in Big Box, I can improve performance and have there be less hiccups by making sure we use this new strategy. Now the new strategy is not necessarily the easiest strategy to implement in the world. So it might take us a while to get this going. And there's so many different spots where we do this in big box that it could potentially, uh, I mean, it's going to take a while to cover everything and it might not be the most interesting thing to do in the world, uh, but it is pretty important. So I want to, I want to tackle that today because really that's probably the most uh, productive way for me to for me thing for me to do because it's going to potentially really help uh with the smoothness of big box which is pretty important so anyways there's that let me catch up on comments here quickly and uh then the next thing i want to do before we get into the performance stuff is to wrap up um the controller stuff um for the new attract mode features Latin, if you go into a game in Launchbox and then press edit on a game, you get the option to, to add additional apps, emulators, etc. Can you add an option that accepts auto hotkey like the emulators do? Oh, sure. So game specific auto hotkey scripts. I get you. That is, uh, I know that has been requested before. Um, so that, that's not something we're, we're going to do today because honestly, that's not a common or popular request, although that has been requested before. Hopefully we can do that eventually though, Latin. That makes sense. <clears throat> hey, Yoshi, welcome. Retro Junkie. This puppy is getting bigger and bigger now. I haven't been on a live stream for months. Well, welcome, Retro. The Funky Gibbon. So am I. I've tried to use it a few times. It keeps bombing out while fetching artwork meta stuff. Every single time really want to use Launchbox 2. It looks ace. He's bombing out while fetching, fetching artwork meta stuff. That doesn't make sense, really. Um, that must be some kind of weird issue. I'm not sure. Uh, but, I don't know. Hit us up on the forums, Funky, and maybe we can help you out. Hopefully we can help you out. Uh, NJ Dave, do I ever attend Microsoft Focus Groups? We have them here in the East Coast in their New York City office. I have, actually, before I've uh, well, I'm not sure if you're talking about the same type of Microsoft focus groups, 
I've attended development, Microsoft development focus groups before. But honestly, it's been quite a while. Um, and that would be fun. I, I would love to do that. I just haven't looked up, you know, what's close by, honestly. But that would be pretty neat. Is this only for Windows or can this be placed on the Raspberry Pi 3, etc.? It is indeed only for Windows. Uh, LaunchBox and BigBox currently only work on Windows, which I'd love it if they worked on the Raspberry Pi 3, but unfortunately that would be a major, major undertaking, and that has come up quite a bit, um, but it's just not uh, feasible for the moment. Is it possible to add, hey Nicholas, is it possible to add more accurate disk merging? As in, I have some games which are named Game Disk 1, Game Disk 2, rather than Disk 1 of 2. Well, everything, <clears throat> it should it should find, should find those games. Um, but good to know if that's a problem, if that's problematic right now. I'd have to look into that. Probably won't get to that today, but that makes sense. They are workshops. Oh, okay. Sure. That would be neat. No, that's a different kind of thing than I've ever attended. I've been to uh, quite a few conventions um, with, you know, lots of Microsoft courses and stuff like that. Uh, development con conventions, but I haven't been to uh, any kind of Microsoft workshops. Neat. Yeah, I'm in Cali. Would it be appropriate to suggest stuff for the database, or is this strictly for the application side of LaunchBox and BigBox? Development, we have done uh, games database development here on stream, but unfortunately, because of the security issues of developing a website on stream, it uh, hasn't gone well. So I don't typically do any games database development here on stream. Um, and you can suggest whatever you want, but no, I won't be doing any, any games database development here on stream, though I know... Um, uh, we are we are constantly working on it. Uh, Vlantix especially uh, has been doing a lot of development uh, on the games database recently. Uh, so uh, feel free to, to suggest stuff. Adding Windows Store games is a pain. And, and unfortunately, the Windows Store, the reason why adding Windows Store games is a pain is because Microsoft sucks and implemented that horribly. And they want it to be a pain. Uh, they have gone out of their way to make it a pain uh, because of security crap. And uh, I'm very, that, that's always been a major irritation to me. There is ways to add it, but yes, it's a pain. Um, there might be a way for us to automate it yet. I haven't looked into it, but the reason why we haven't tackled that is because Microsoft just really screwed the pooch on that one. Uh, it's really bad. To play... What is the plan for the new version? Uh, well, there's lots of stuff in the new version. You can check out the, the change log in um, uh, on the web uh, under about changes, something like that. Uh, test nightlies. Uh, you you got, just got to get the betas. Just check the box in, um, in the options to update to beta releases. The easiest way to do it, pure luck, is just to add the shortcut to the um, to the application path. Any place to download a pre-configured setup of Big Box? No, unfortunately, there's not, and we won't be providing that. And anybody who does provide that should not be trusted, um, because uh, nobody should be distributing uh, games and uh, all that stuff together. <clears throat> Rasputin. Nice. Awesome, man. Good to hear. 7.12 beta. Is it 7.12? I thought it was 7.11. I'm I'm going nuts. <laughs> Version info. We're on 7.11 beta 12. That's why.
Yeah, I'm not surprised, Retro Junkie. Sure, two play. Cool. All right. So, let's get started. The first thing I need to do is is uh, get the controller code running. I need to grab a controller, though. I need to hook up an Xbox One controller here. And get it connected. Hopefully, I still have a, yeah, got a wireless guy over here. Where's the, come on. Sync. It's connected to my Xbox One right now, so hopefully that'll do it. We shall see. Should go turn off my Xbox One. <clears throat> hey, Wolfen. Sure, Yoshi. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Um, and it's certainly not the first uh, time we've heard that, and I agree. I would love to see that as well. Um, <laughs> thank you, Wyatt. I appreciate that. Hey, Echo Shard, greetings. Hey, Charco, uh, we're doing performance primarily and some other wrapping up some other things. Yeah, feel free to shoot him, Wolfen, and uh, and I'll I'll answer you. Okay, so first off, in my main view model. Zoom in a little bit here so you guys can hopefully read my code. And we didn't get the buttons implemented for the, we only got the keys implemented last time. We didn't get the buttons implemented. And so here's my method. This is a controller timer elapsed. Um, and there's two buttons we added. Button 16, this is if buttons are held, if they're down. All right, so handle joystick button is what we're looking at here. Okay, else if, come on, button equals root at data manager dot big box settings dot controller start attract mode then uh, we need to do what we do on keys and I need to figure that out the uh, handle key up and handle key down So this is the what we do for start attract mode. And then the wheel spin is a little more complicated because again, we have press and release, which is a different thing than we've really done anywhere else. But that should make it so that it works for starting attract mode. And then Controller spin, what did that wheel spin? 
<coughs> and we need to go back to handle key down. So right now, this is what we're doing. And then we need to figure out the on release, which is tricky. So let's go back here. We'll paste that code there. And we need to, oh, really? <laughs> Device setup complete. That's silly. It's not like it's never been connected before. Huh. All right. So um, let me catch up on some comments here. Performance anxiety. <laughs> I have not checked checked him out, Nicholas, but good to know. Can you can I map favorites? Map favorites. Remind me that of what you mean by that, Dave. Uh, to favorite a game via the via um, a button. Hey, Pac Man. Dude, that click, I miss my blues. Yeah, man, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what the heck you mean by that. I'm going to need an extra 20 buttons on my controller. I know, that's the thing. Nobody's got this many buttons on their controller. But, but if, you, if you've got a... Uh, the thing is, a lot of people have uh, big old arcade uh, controllers with literally 20 buttons, so... Wolfen, will you add a cache folder to Launchbox? Launchbox must not load all the icons from start again every time you open Launchbox. We already do that, Wolfen. Um, and uh, yeah, if we didn't do that, it would be it would take friggin' years to load the stuff up. So performance is pretty much as good as it can be with that. A cache folder is definitely already there, guys. <laughs> There's a lot of work that has gone into a Launchbox cache. That's there already. Hey, Bissy. Plugins are already available on Big Box Dark Picks. Favorite a game button, sure. All right. Whoops. Thank you, Charco. Oh, Cherry Blues. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you miss your you miss you miss your uh mechanical keyboard. Yeah, I I uh, I love my I love this keyboard. I'm using the DOS keyboard right now with Cherry MX or Cherry MX, Cherry Blues, whatever it is. Um and yeah, uh I used to swear by Logitech Chicklets uh a certain one keyboard from Logitech and moved on from that to a mechanical keyboard and I won't go back. Hey Crusader, uh, working on uh, just adding some controller buttons right now ultimately, but uh, I'm going to be working on performance here in a second. I gotta have the clicky, the clicky is important to me. <laughs> Alright, so this should start off the wheel spin but when the button is released I need to stop it and that's the tricky thing here how am I gonna do that I'm not quite sure what do we get
This is our method that happens via a timer. <clears throat> we check to see if down means it was just pressed ultimately held means it's held down a subsequent time I don't know We do have up. Oh, good. Okay. So I can simply POV stuff. I'm gonna just copy all this and I'm gonna do a replace for held. I'm just gonna replace with up. And then we just need that method implemented, handle joystick button up. data manager that big box settings dot controller uh, wheel spin then we need to look at what to do and that is under uh, handle key up that's all we got to do right there it looks like Okay, well, in theory, however, we might run into some stuff um, overriding it. So this stop attract mode. Yeah. A lot of references to this. I know in so key down. Handle key down. If not this dot wheel spin enabled, stop attract mode. So basically All those calls to stop attract mode need to be this instead. So maybe we can simplify that. I'm not sure. Probably not because I'd have to check for every single one of these. So I guess we'll do it everywhere, as annoying as that is. <clears throat> oh, come on. Here we go.
That way it's not going to interfere because um, when you press a button, right now it's going to just stop attract mode period, but we can't do that if we're manually running a wheel spin. I could just put this in the method instead. I wonder though, that would be smarter. I don't know what I'm thinking here. Unless stop attract mode is called, I don't, yeah, I don't think, we might have a problem putting it in the method, honestly, but I don't like doing it like this, so we're gonna, just gonna return from the method if wheel spin is enabled. I see, so we turn it off, so that, should work in theory. <clears throat> and I don't need this there anymore. Okay. All right, well, we're in good shape now, I think. Let's give it a test. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Comments. This is Big Box uh, Crusader. This is, well, LaunchBox. Uh, check out launchbox-app.com if you don't really know what it is. Yes, it's C-sharp. Thank you, Charco. That's good to hear. Hey to Brazil. Brazil. Thank you. Thank you so much. Know that roughly the next public release. Uh, we're... We are, uh, I don't know, we're kind of in limbo, uh, I will admit. I, I may put out a release without all of the promised features. The 3D engine, the new 3D engine, we're still working on integrating. Um, and then there's the other surprise. So I'm not sure yet when the next public release. I know it's been a while, um, but there's reasons for that that I can't necessarily go into for the moment. Smoother mouse wheel scrolling, sure. We can look into that at some point. Hey, Ricky. <laughs> hey, Jaggerol. Big Box is still counting hidden games of playlists in the vertical wheel view. Ah. Counting, what do you mean by counting? Is it displaying them or just counting them in the count? I assume that's what you mean. But that's good to know, Retro. Ah, I gotcha, Deli. Yeah, I don't, I don't usually create themes. I did create the original default theme. Um, but yep, the community is the one making the killer themes. Hi Merlin, um, what's your feature request? Yeah, tell me what it is, if you would. Different things for platform is actually planned, uh, and that should be tackled here pretty soon because it was on the poll in the counter. Okay. 
Thank you, Chris. Mohawk Chris. I appreciate that. Hey, Static Fade. Okay, Merlin. Yeah, um, that sounds like a pretty cool thing. It's probably not going to be a priority because it's probably not a very common request, but uh, I get you. You can see all the all the stuff on the website uh, if you go. Um, oh, what is it? The change log. So about uh, latest changes, and you'll see all the all the stuff. I uh, pretty much every hat I have I've gotten from Amazon. But thank you, Static Fade. Yeah, I get you, Merlin. Pac-Man, yes and no. Uh, that's not the only thing. Hey, Nilk. All right, so <clears throat> let's get back into this. Uh, I think, so we're built. Let's give it a test and see if we've got uh, proper controller support for those new features here. All right, so I'm gonna back out. I'm using my controller here, so I'm a little slower than usual. Uh, we're gonna go into um, controller buttons, and we're gonna have to get rid of something here, of course. We I added start attract mode and spin wheel while pressed, so I need to assign buttons to those. Um, probably get rid of that one. <clears throat> seven and eight, or what is, I think seven and eight are select and start. So let's use those. Start a track mode, we'll do button seven. Spin wheel while pressed, we'll do button eight. And just to check to make sure I'm not using that stuff anywhere else, looks like we're good. So now, in theory, if I press button seven, yeah, see, that didn't work. What's going on there? It's getting cut off somehow. So I have to look into that. What about spin wheel while pressed? I'm holding the button down, obviously. When I release it, and it slows down. Hold the button down. Release it. Let's go into consoles. NES. It's fine. And I'm holding the button down to spin the wheel. We release it. Yeah. So that's working at least. So this was implemented primarily to be able to select a random game. Um, and also just because it's freaking fun. So I'm excited to get this out there. I, I can't believe I, I didn't get this beta out there. I'm sorry for that, guys. But that should I should be able to put a beta out today unless we're in the middle of something with the performance stuff. But yeah, that's working great. Um, but the start attract mode is getting cut off somehow. So I gotta fix that here quick before we get into the image optimization stuff. Hey, Op. Uh... 
Launchbox does have a self-updating feature, yes. Other games of the developer, other games of the series, yes, agreed there. Oh, this, yeah, this startup video has been around for a long time, but it is definitely one of my favorites. Unfortunately, I, I hate when I don't remember who created something. I don't remember the forum name of, of the guy who created it. I remember the conversation I had, though. Can I do combos on my controller? Yes. Although I don't know what you mean exactly, Dave. Yeah, it's fun. The roulette stuff. <laughs> yeah, it'll definitely be a good thing, Ali. Thank you, Dark Picks. Have a good one. All right, so we have an issue where in the controller button down, or is the controller button up? Oh, I know what it is. It's probably the button up, I'm guessing. Handle joystick button up. But we probably don't need stop attract mode in here for these because it's already happening on button down. I'm guessing that's the problem, although I'm not certain. We'll find out. All right. Here goes. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to go into consoles, NES. There it is. There's my start attract mode. Go into a different uh, platform. I'm getting some issues with the background video for some reason in um, the latest Critical Zone theme. Anyways, obviously it's working, so we're in good shape there. Oh, you mean uh, a button combination to, to start a track mode? No, unfortunately that's not possible. The button combinations currently only work for uh, the controller automation features. Um, but anyways. Yeah, he's still around, Ricky. Basically... Um, we're still, you know, we'll, we'll put out news videos. We're probably going to put out news videos a little less. But yes, uh, he's still around with us. Uh, we just need to, we just need to have him put out another video here. Hey, Pac-Man. Yeah, um, yeah, we did pray when I first started the stream. Hey, Slash Guns. All right. Um, so we got that covered. I think we're ready to go with that. So we're on to the image optimization stuff. We got over two hours left in the stream, so we got plenty of time to get that done, or get get it started anyways. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get it done. Starting with the backgrounds. Um, I need to pull up themed views. The background view. This is where I want to start because anywhere we have a background, there's quite a quite a bit of that. We want to load it up in the background, obviously. So I need my background view model. 
And I have some sample code up here on my other monitor that I can use to uh, that I'm going to structure this off of. But it is going to take a little bit of thinking here. This is the video view model. That's not what I want. What am I doing? I want the background view model. So this is really simple right now, but it's not going to be really simple by the time we're done here. And this is a property changed base. We're going to need to make it view aware for one thing. So I guess we'll get there first. got our event handler we need a view object what do I do with this let's check out uh, I sure it's under the WPF project child view model base oh it is just an object interesting get view and then attach view yeah simple enough all right so this is going to be a well, it doesn't really need to be a property in this case. Private object view. Attach view, this.view equals view. And get view, we're going to return this.view. Simple enough. <clears throat> you know what, though? We don't really even need that. Although we have to get view, eh, whatever. It doesn't really matter that much. I'm going to rename this so it doesn't have that error. Okay. Hey, emotions. Yep, it's not it's not open source. I know I'm showing code, and I do show the co code a lot. Um, it's pretty wide open because of these streams. However, it is a closed source project. What is an SBC, Dave? I think I have an idea what you're talking about, but I'm not quite sure. top secret DLL somewhere that makes everything work. There is, well, no, there's, eh, honestly, yeah, I mean, the, all the code is right here in front of, in front of me. I mean, it's not like I'm hiding anything. How we do have some obfuscation though. If anybody knows what obfuscation is, there is some obfuscation in, in the released, um, product. That's what some of the top secret DLL would say. <laughs> That's hilarious. Ricky, Jason, what do you think about a big box feature of a transformer like voice saying initializing game or something similar when a game is selected like M Galaxy's similar feature? That has been um, requested before. And actually, I think it's even been on the poll, um, like talking. Um, it didn't get a lot of, a lot of uh, support, I don't think, when it was on the poll last time. Which was, which is why we haven't tackled it, but uh, anyways. So maybe at some point. Uh, so we have our view now. Um, I'll pull up my code over here. <clears throat>
All right. So one of the things that is going to make this more complicated is that we don't want to start a new thread every single time we load a new image. We want a queue. So we're going to need a class that will handle basically uh, a queue of loading images. And we're going to need to be able to trigger that from a bunch of different places. So I guess we can start with some sort of uh, class. And it's called image loader or something. And I'm going to make this a static class because we don't need to instantiate anything. We're going to need a concurrent queue. Of what, though? I don't, I don't know yet. Um, for, let's start with a public static void in queue. Um, we need an image path, and then we need something that can that can be done when it's done. Uh, basically, So ultimately, we're going to be setting the image on whatever. But I think we should use an action for that. Um, it's going to take an image source. So it's an action of image source. So whenever it's done loading in, in the separate thread, we would call this action method to actually set the image where it needs to go. Um, so first off, we're going to say, String image path <clears throat> and secondly I'm gonna say action. This is actually a system dot action of image source. Image source is the loaded image ultimately. That's what represents the loaded image. Um, loaded, unloaded action. So this is what we're going to call in our static method in order to queue loading an image in the background and uh, um, update it when it's done. How are we doing on comments here? <clears throat> Text-to-speech got like one vote. <laughs> yeah, Quad. Quad was a proponent of text-to-speech. I've got lots of global work, worker classes, Neilk. Hey, Phobos. Uh, working on image loading performance right now in Big Box. I don't know what you're talking about, Neilk. Your your terminology is way over my head, brother. Thank you, Ricky.
Can I find more emotions? Can I find more info about you on the Launchbox website? Like, how do you start this idea of porting retro games into PC and so on? Uh, there's tutorials on YouTube to get you started emotions. Um, if you search for Launchbox on YouTube, you should find our channel. And uh, you'll there's a million tutorials to get you started. Thank you, Pac-Man. All right. Um, <clears throat> so now that we have that, we are going to need our queue. The question is, what do we do a queue of? Probably, I'm going to create an object, I think, for that. Image loader queue item or something that will contain the action and the image path and whatever else we might need later on. Um, I could just, you know, not create a custom object and use a dictionary or something like that, but I'm not going to do that. I want to, I want to make this flexible. So image loader, queue item, we're going to add another class, image loader, queue item. And we're simply going to have public string image path and getter. I'm just going to make it be a getter only because it's going to be in the constructor. And a public action of, uh, again, um, an image source. on loaded action get and public image loader queue item string image path action of image source on loaded action There we go. <clears throat> so now we need a private static concurrent queue of um, image loader queue item, image loading queue. Now, um, one thing I've done elsewhere is actually have this be multi-threaded so that you can specify the number of threads loading images. However, for this, I don't think that's necessary. I think uh, it's just one thread is going to be enough. The stuff for like cover flow and stuff like that has already been implemented in the background. so. That's the stuff that more needs to be multi-threaded. I don't, I don't think, I, so I think one queue and one thread is gonna be enough for this. Because the only stuff that's gonna be loaded is the single images. We have images for uh, backgrounds and we have images for boxes, the, the single boxes that are displayed and stuff like that. So that's basically just one at a time usually, um, or two at a time or three at a time. But I don't wanna use more than one thread, I don't think in this, in this case, so. <clears throat> Okay. Now we need to know whether the loading queue is running. Um, so I'm going to do a private static bool. <coughs> is loading queue running? Um, and I think that's all I need for my private variables here.
Oh, a wiki on my background. There is an about page about me. Um, but, uh, no, I don't really have anything more than that. Nice, Neil. Yeah, I'm with you. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry if I'm not diving into the technical stuff. I just, uh, I don't know. Is it going to be a normal or a priority queue? It's going to be, well, it's going to be a background thread probably so that it doesn't interfere with the UI, but it'll load quickly. Laner J, shout it out. It's going to be really optimal. You should have a, you could have a queue plus thread for a physical hard drive actually being used since the IO is probably your link factor. Yeah, that makes sense. Alfredo wanted to ask if Woodhawker is going to do more Launchbox videos. Yes, I hope so. I believe so. Yes. Yeah, the thing is with the marketing guys, um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, we have invested a lot of time and money into marketing, even my, even myself personally. And one thing I've learned recently, I know it seems like I've, uh, into, in some aspects, I've disappeared and I apologize for that. Um, but to be honest, the marketing is at this point in the stage of the project. I'm not saying the marketing wasn't incredibly important earlier on as it was, but in this, at this point in the project, we have a lot of organic traffic. And what I mean, what I mean by organic traffic is stuff coming in from Google, um, and search engines. And I've learned that the marketing we were doing, um, although it got us where we are now is is not as effective as um what it used to be uh, and frankly we don't need it as badly as we used to uh, because we're big enough now that we're getting organic traffic and uh i don't notice i mean we used to send out emails every single week uh, we used to come up with news videos every single week and it's not that we haven't had news because honestly we have um but uh it's just it hasn't been it's it's been obvious that it's not it, it's not as effective anymore as it used to be um the the marketing so i would rather worry about it less and focus my time elsewhere um than uh keep going hardcore with all the marketing we were doing um, we're still doing we're still going to be doing marketing we're still going to be sending out emails and videos and all that stuff um, but less so going forward um, just because it's not as crucial as it felt a while back. Uh, we still get lots and lots of new people every day. Um, so I'm, and that's, and that's actually a really good thing because that means I am able to focus more on the fun stuff like development. And although, I mean, marketing can be fun, but I'm not a marketer, you know, that's not my, that's not my cup of tea. And yes, Woodhawker, uh, I am hoping will definitely join us for, uh, more videos in the future. Um, but, um, you know, we'll do it when we have a big announcement that we think is going to be uh, effective at marketing. Um, so that's the gist of where we're coming from there. Watching this instead of working on my C++ project. Yeah, stuff is crazy hard for you. I, I tell you what, C++ ain't easy. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a difficult language. I haven't mastered C++ myself. I, I, uh, had the pleasure of working with Java in college. And I will say that I'm glad I did work with Java primarily in college because it uh, uh, was very good for, um, you know, being productive and, and being productive quick because uh, I was able to learn C Sharp because it's very similar to Java and, and go from there. C++ is going to get you into a different type of development, you know. Uh, more lower level development stuff. Um, but yeah, C++ is hard. <laughs> Can I add a progress bar when 
get when syncing the game's library to the cloud. I really need to, yeah, I need to tweak that process and get that improved. I agree. <clears throat> Those squiggles there are why I like singletons over static classes. You still get your constructor. Well, those those squiggles will go away when I use them, Neok. But yeah, I I know it, I I'm I I've done that lots of times, and it's it just feels like bloat to me uh, when I do it. But I get you. Ah, you already had uh, emotions. You already see software engineer non C sharp non. Not. Oh, I see. Build something. Build an application. Build a cabinet. I'm not quite sure. Do I develop other software besides LaunchBox and BigBox? Not currently. Um, the well, there's a surprise coming, but uh, it's uh, related. So, anyways, uh, no, not really. I don't. Uh, the, this is my project. This is what I work on um, full time. I used to. I have developed a lot of other software, mostly business software, um, and I'm very glad to move on from that. Sure, Alfredo. Yeah, I'm not surprised, Merlin. Thank you to Phoenix. Yeah, I agree. Um, word of mouth is huge. In person and online, you know. Thank you, Pac-Man. Yeah, we get plenty of traffic. It's kind of amazing. Evil Orco. Nope, no hints. Not yet. It's coming. Yeah, uh... Business APIs, that can be fun. I've done quite a bit of that in the past, although I think I would get pretty bored if I was only working on APIs. But Thank you, Op. Sweet. Echo Shard, I'm sorry, man. I, I, uh, I, I haven't, I don't remember it. So probably not, not in a while anyways, uh, but I'll, I'll go look back at it. DOS launch box with ASCII vids. <laughs> we already did do DOS launch box, as you know. You know, recently I, in my free time, uh, I see if anybody's excited about this. This is not the surprise, okay? But recently in my free time, uh, I've been, well, behind me, you guys, let me see what you guys can see. Behind me... This guy right here, you probably can't see it very well, but this is a Pentium 75, MMX 75, um, that I've been playing with. And of course it's running DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.11. Uh, and recently, and it's it's running LaunchBox for DOS and all that stuff. And recently I, um, in my evenings, I installed Visual Basic 3.0 for uh, Windows 3.11. So one thing I was tempted to do was uh, come up with LaunchBox for Windows 3.11. But of course, that's ridiculous beyond belief, but so is LaunchBox for DOS. And if I built it, it would be super stupid simple. I mean, this this thing's only got 256 colors. It's, it's not like it's, uh, I can't do pretty box art images on 256 colors anyways. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it'd be fun to do something stupid like that again. Oh, hey, Alex. Awesome. Good to know. I will poke you. I shall be poked. 
Linux launch box. Yeah. I'd love to build a Linux launch box, uh, but man, the effort would be insane. It'd be like building everything from scratch again. The reason why I'm able to tackle stuff like DOS and Windows 3.11 is because, I mean, the platforms are ancient and there's not a whole lot you can do anyways, so it's like, it's quick. It's not, it's not a lot of work. Linux, on the other hand, would be a ton of work. <clears throat> wow, that's amazing, Phoenix. Developing an OS, that would be amazing. But no, I'm not developing an OS. The DPI stuff, yeah, I know. I, I know what you mean. Um, I had made progress on that, but to be honest, I threw it away. Uh, because it wasn't what I wanted. Um, so I haven't done anything new on that since I threw away the work that I had. And the reason why I threw it away is because it just didn't work as well as I wanted it to. Is VR big box a surprise? I'm not. I'm not going to answer any more questions on the surprise because I don't want to accidentally spoil it. But uh, we shall see. Yes, Echo Shard has an awesome big box VR project. All right, where are we at? We're building this image queue. So in queuing an image, let's see here. This is where we're doing it. So this whole thread pool, that queue user work item, if we're not working, ultimately is the is the trick. So when we enqueue something, what we need to do is, well, first off, if image loader dot image loading queue equals null, we need to initialize that. Okay. From there. We need to enqueue it of course. <clears throat> we can probably, instead of just doing this in the constructor, what we should probably do is, um, is an image load loader queue item, item, so that you can construct it and then send it in. And um, I'm going to say image loader dot image loading queue dot q dot in queue what is it yeah in queue item <clears throat> so that'll add it to the to the queue and then from there if not is loading queue running then we're gonna call thread pool dot q user work item and um, we're gonna I'm gonna add a new method here a private static void load images and just an object that we won't use call it unused Q user work item um, image loader dot load images and this is the work I think or the state which is just going to be null because we're not using any state so this will only start up the um, another a new thread will only be started if 
uh, it's not if we don't have a thread already running is basically what that what that does. And then at the beginning of our method, we need to say image loader dot is loading queue running equals true. And at the end, it's going to be image loader dot is loading queue running equals false. Simple enough. And then we do all our actual loading of images. <clears throat> And it's going to be in a while. So while um, image loader dot image loading queue dot try dq. I'm going to do an out image loader queue item item. That will basically clear out the queue, go through, go through item by item. And we load up our images. We have to check if it's a JPEG or a PNG um, from our image path. So I guess we can probably just use uh, end, ends with on that. Um, Dot JPEG, ordinal ignore case, and I guess there's the possibility, the rare possibility of it being JPEG. <clears throat> Let's put that on a new line. No, oh, come on, why do you gotta do that to me? That's so irritating. Fine, you jerk. All right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, else, oops. We have a separate loading thing for PNGs. And if it's neither, I guess we're just not going to do anything. I don't want to throw an exception or anything. Yeah. Happy Tuesday, Phil. I have not, Dave. Well, in this case, Neil, if it's not a PNG and it's not a JPEG, it's just not going to load anything. So I'm think I think I'm okay with that. Gifts. Good point. GIFs. Huh. Well, actually, GIFs right now require a separate... a separate thing. So... It's a separate control... No, it's a... I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to test out GIFs. I don't even know how to use this method to load up GIFs, so that's not going to be feasible. GIFs are really rare um, in big box and really they're only used in in the theming engine to do some certain little animations um, but anyways we'll tackle that later so uh, we're already in our separate thread which is good 
We definitely want to put uh, stuff in a try catch. And I'm just going to catch everything because obviously, if we're running into an issue loading an, an image, meh. I'm just going to ignore for now. Yes, I should push this on back through. But if the image doesn't load, the image doesn't load. What are you going to do? I mean, big deal. It, the image won't show up. It's not a big deal. All right, so we need a... I'm going to say, uh, first off... Item.imagePath equals... Uh, Paths dot get full no what is it file helper that get full path item dot image path which just ensures that we have oh it's not settable so let's say string path <clears throat> just make sure we have the full path of the image instead of the relative path and uh, var decoder equals new JPEG bitmap decoder it has to be a URI and bitmap create options dot preserve pixel format and bitmap cache option dot on load okay that's what's worked well for me in the past decoder.frames0.freeze, which helps make the image uh, thread safe. And then we're going to call whatever action, because at that point the image is loaded and we call whatever action um, is there and feed it the image source. So we're gonna say, um, item dot on loaded action and we feed it I believe we feed it the frame yeah decoder dot frames zero and it's the same kind of thing uh, with the PNG it's just with a different bitmap decoder Oh, GIFs is clear logos. That makes sense. Yeah, that might be an issue. We'll have to, we'll have to look at that, Neil. The, they won't be animated unless a certain type of control is used. So they're probably not animated. Michello, we're working on image loading tweaks. Yeah, uh, what this I knew about the freeze thing because this is the freeze thing can be used even on um, a an image object, I believe. But the tricky thing is that uh, you have to go down to this JPEG bitmap decoder stuff in order for it to be uh, thread safe. It's not thread safe if you use an actual image object and just do it that way which is stupid, it should be. There's, it doesn't make any sense why they have to make this so freaking difficult and why you gotta go this low level in order to make it thread safe. But anyways, this method, I and I didn't find this code for a long time, but once I, now that I found it, it's nice uh, because I can actually have thread safe images going on. There's Echo Shard. Uh, so this is going to be, I'm gonna go ahead and put this up Now we'll leave it in there, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna copy this whole block down to here. And uh, we're gonna use a PNG bitmap decoder instead of a JPEG bitmap decoder. And I think that's all we need. So in theory, we have a class that works, that loads images in the background and uh, notifies when it's done. 
nice and simple. We may want to uh, invoke this so that it happens on the UI thread. Come to think of it, it's it's always going to need to be invoked because you're always going to be re referring to a UI object that you're assigning the image to. So I'm thinking we should just invoke this onloaded action by default. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm using, uh, uh, what is it? What did I call it? I renamed it recently. Threading dot invoke What's the problem here? Null, access to modified closure. What the heck does that even mean? Copy to local variable. I don't understand that at all. I don't get that. Probably because it's, yeah, I don't know. It's part of the while. Whatever. Oh, mutex it, yeah. Thank you, Michello. Hey, Camel. Yeah, but JPEG and PNG Merlin are the vast majority. Honestly, there's, yeah, there's bitmap, BMP, bump, but who the heck uses that? Nobody. Um, there's, uh, so honestly, JPEG and PNG are the only worthwhile image types to use other than GIF if you want an, emula em if you want an animation. There's, there's no other worthy image types out there. If you're using a different image type, you're doing it wrong, basically. Oh, that sucks, Camel. I assume you uh, you do have your dog back. The scope issue with the lambda copying into local variable ensures the original won't change value. Okay, interesting. Huh. APNG, probably not. Maybe, I don't know. Interesting. I've heard of it, but I haven't uh, really dived into it. Hey guys, I'm home. <laughs> That's funny. I used to have a dog that did that too. But my dog right now, we have a husky, uh, he's a mutt, but he's mostly husky and, uh, he won't leave, uh, he won't leave our side. So that's weird, but where it's good is most huskies will run, you know, they like to run. Been adding some clear logos for playlist names recently, and that's the only way to get them to appear is to refresh all images. May this be grouped with platforms instead? Probably, yes. I've thought I've seen that before, Charco. And I think that would probably be a good thing to add. Um, so not right now, but yes, I think we should probably get that done. <clears throat> oh yeah, definitely. Mutts are always healthier. Um, and I uh, I've had experiences with purebreds, and I don't. I won't ever choose a purebred dog, um, because they come out with. They have. They come out with. They have all kinds of issues. Refresh selected images, yeah, but uh, that only works for uh, specific games. Hmm. Yeah, it's in big box. 
<laughs> Dr. Wilbur McFunky Biscuit. I, I know we've heard that before. Thank you, Charco. <laughs> the stupidest dog. <laughs> I've had a number of stupid dogs. My dog right now is smart, although he's really, he's probably too smart for his own good because he's needy. Yeah. <laughs> Team up with Banda Express and I, license numbers and fortune cookies. That's hilarious. Oh. All right. So. We have this class built in its basic form. So let's attempt to use it here uh, from background view model. So the tricky thing here is we don't have a name on, I, I can't change the requirements. I can't easily change the requirements for the theming. Um, and since we don't have a name on this image element, I'm gonna have to figure out how to find it, which is not going to be the easiest thing in the world. Um, if I put in a specific requirement here, then all the themes are going to break and that's no good. So we need to make it work with existing themes, but this is the element I need to find and hook up an image to. So first off in my background view model, that's why we needed the view so that I could get access to the image object. <laughs> Neil. Yeah, we're working on performance improvements and loading images, Camel. Wow, we've had uh, that request a couple times now, Adolfo. Uh, favorite button. Uh, any idea when 7-11 will go live? Not really. Uh, it's still up in the air. I don't have any immediate plans on that. Uh, we're gonna keep putting out betas for a while while we're while we wrap up a couple other things. Slushies. All right, so we have our view. We need to cast the view as an object I can work with, and I need to remember what that is. Um, if I take a look at maybe games you model base. Attach view. The view attached, I don't know. Apparently not. Let's go, uh, Maybe use references to attach view an override in error pop up view model. User control this dot view, okay. Dot content as. There's better examples than that, though, I think.
Is that the wrong? Yeah, that's the wrong thing. Attach view. All right. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. This guy right here. Then I need uh, my background view model. panel equals this is going to be user control always we can go ahead and import that we don't need the full path <clears throat> I'm just gonna say this dot view dot content as framework element root panel, I don't like that name. I'm just gonna call it root. All right, so now we have our root piece of content and I need to figure out how to find from my background view, the, the image. I think what I'm gonna do is just try and, I don't know if there's a way to search for the first element of type image. Find out. I know there's find name, but we can't use that. That's what we use elsewhere, but there's no name on this object, so I can't do that. Hmm. Nope. Eek. We're gonna have to build our own loop. I was afraid of this. Controls. Probably use link, yeah. Got to figure out how to find children though right now. I might have to... Yeah, there's, well, I, I don't know, honestly, Nilk. Hey, Dr. Bad, Bad Vibes. The keyword where it's capital letters if he had the keys harder. Children. Is children a thing? Why wasn't it showing up? Yeah, children isn't apparently framework element. It might not be the class to use. We might just need the thing is it's a grid, is what this is, but it's not always gonna be no it's not. In this case, it's image. Image is the object. That is the framework element, it's an image. 
So in this case, you know, I could, I can make the assumption um, that the root element is an image for this particular object, but then that messes up themes. For now, that's what I'm going to do, though. I'm just going to say, we'll come back to this image equals user control this dot view dot content as image. Um, and if image equals null, then nothing's going to load, which is not good. But we'll come back to that. So at least we have our image now. Um, and then all we need to do is now that we have our image is simply call the image loader. So I'm going to say image loader dot in queue. I need to write a, gen a generic XAML object control finder. Yeah, recursive. That's the thing. That's not a fun thing to do. I think I might have done that before, believe it or not. Anyways, so we're in queuing. We're going to do a new image loader queue item. We're going to feed it the image path that we're loading, which in this case is just this.imagePath. And the uh, unloaded action, I'm going to do, uh, just do it with that syntax there. We're going to say this dot um, no, not this. I'm going to say image dot image source, image dot source equals source in theory that'll work now the other thing is though we need to since we have the binding in place I basically need to remove this so that it doesn't get set and loaded by the um, the binding My hat eats apples. Yes, it does. Everybody say welcome to uh, my wife. All right. All right. Um, so that should, in theory, work. It's time to build. Give it a test and see what happens. See if we have background images. We might have to, I mean, we have background videos and a lot of this stuff. So to test this, we might need to switch out some things, potentially. 
Should be interesting. Let's see what happens. Okay, so... So again, we have a background image here. Let me switch up the view. I think that's a background image. No, that's a video. I'm not sure, that might have been it. It wasn't loading. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's loading for some reason. What's going on here? Okay, let's see what's going on. I think it should be loading the background images. Do uh, I'm gonna put my stuff over here so that I can debug. Put a breakpoint on. Um, Let's make sure it's actually queuing it. Okay, give this a run. <clears throat> All right, we'll go. Okay, so it isn't queuing the image, my image path is it's the it's the super the SNES fan art basically which that's what it should be go ahead and walk through that sorry you guys can't see this right now Oh, I didn't, I, I pressed the, okay. So we're gonna dive in, we're creating the object. And then I'm going into, I'm gonna put a breakpoint in here, and run it. Hmm, the calling thread cannot access the object because a different thread owns it. What the heck? Why am I getting a threading exception? Because I do I'm doing this successfully elsewhere. Yoshi, all I can figure is maybe it's a um, firewall issue. An execution context issue. Or is it, maybe it's not the, 
I need to check again what is the uh, what object is throwing the exception. Is it decoder frame zero or is it the action? It shouldn't be the action. What the heck? We are calling freeze on it. I'm doing this elsewhere successfully. That's what I'm weirded out about. And I'm even invoking it the exact same way. So what am I doing wrong? I guess I'm using a bitmap frame, but let's dive into this again and see what's going on exactly. Consoles, SNES, okay. Wait a minute, what am I doing? No, that's correct. Oh, what, yeah, I'm in the wrong place. I don't care about this one. This is the one I care about. And... So we're creating our dispatcher, yeah, yeah. And we invoke it. Mm-hmm. I need to figure out what the issue is, though. It can't be the action. Why would that be an issue? That, that can't be the problem. It has to be this. What am I missing here? I'm not coding in VR. It's hilarious. An execution context issue. I don't even know what that means, Neil. Um, this is strange, though. Why is this? I mean, this is working perfectly fine elsewhere. What's the issue? The only thing I'm not doing or that I'm doing differently here is I'm using an action. I mean, I could feed over an image object instead. And then set it. Well, I'm calling Obviously, this is just an, a weird, intricate issue. I I know that, I mean, I have working code here that works. And I use, basically, I use a method um, 
but actually I'm I mean ultimately I'm doing the same thing it's just not a generic method in this case I guess I mean what if I did this um, let's try this so we have our image loader queue item instead of using an action what if I set if I said public image image and we feed over an image image so that image equals image then Instead of doing this, what we do is we invoke and we say item one dot image dot source equals decoder decoder dot frames zero. course we're not going to build Okay, so over here we need to feed in image ultimately. And we'll see what happens with that. That's closer to what I'm doing elsewhere that's working. So I don't know, we'll see. Okay. Same. Calling thread cannot access this object because a different thread owns it. What object is it? A different thread owns the image object? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm invoking it. But is this image actually owned by a, another? I have an idea what's going on here. I don't think it's decoder.frame0. I think it's the image object. So, um, but attach view should, in theory, be running on the UI thread. I don't know. What if I did this? Um, let's do threading dot invoke no that's not gonna do it because the image is this has to be running I don't I don't get it Continue with what's that? Same. What the heck? I 
Another thread owns it. So I need to figure out, I guess, what... Whether it's this object or this object first. Pain in the butt. Um, let's undo this stuff, because that's useless. That doesn't even make any sense. Because the attach view has to be running on the UI thread. It, it only makes sense. Come on, there we go. Um, yeah, the we're, we're already invo invoking threading, threading calls that exactly. Um, I need to figure out if it's this or that. So first I need to do I don't know. I think done this before, but I have to look it up. Uh, what if I, I don't know, let's see if this even works. So I don't get an error doing that, which doesn't prove anything, unfortunately. But I think that means that it's not with this, it is with my decoder frame zero, which is screwed up since this is working elsewhere just fine. What the heck? Unless maybe it's the decoder. So maybe what I need to say is... Um, var frame equals decoder dot frames zero. And then frame dot freeze. image.source equals frame. Could that be the problem? I don't know. Could be the decoder. Yeah, I'm running low on coffee. I could use some too. All right, here goes. It'd be nice if this worked. Okay, build, succeeded. That worked. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. All right, it's very faded. But that was the issue. That makes sense. So the image is very faded, so you can't see it very well, but it's loading.
<clears throat> Yay, City Hunter 2. Woo! Well, we might have checked that out here in a second. All right, so this works though, guys. That's good. That's a big win. We have a working solution. And the issue was simply that uh, our um, we were we were basically referring to decoder in the sec in the UI thread. We can't do that. We have to refer to only to frame in the UI thread, which is sensitive 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 but it is what it is and it works so i'm happy with that um so on backgrounds they are now being loaded in the background how how appropriate um Dark picks. How to change the, na the the images of classes like handheld and computer? Uh, they go in. Uh, well, you can manage platform categories and change them there. In Launchbox. Hey gamer. Missed the fireworks. Yep, sorry. Big box can use two gigs of RAM depending on how much uh, um, images are loaded. It shouldn't. It shouldn't use it in the background though. It should be eliminating them when you start a game. But yes, it can. Obviously, if you're loading a bunch of big images in cover flow, it's going to need a lot of RAM. Yeah, threading's a pain in the butt. It really is. Although there's not a lot to learn, it's just the quirks. All right, so. From here, the issue we still have is that we're assuming that all the uh, and I think most of the themes, this would be the case, but we're assuming that the root element is an image uh, in order for this to work. And I don't know if that's legitimate. Hello? Thank you. I can't really eat while I'm on stream, though. But thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I just got some coffee. Sixty-four gigs is a lot of gigs. I've got thirty-two on mine, and it's overkill. Honestly, uh, RAM management is handled primarily by WPF. Um, we're not doing anything that special as far as managing RAM. by eight that is ridiculous that's amazing coffee all right um so what to do about this though yeah i need i need something that is going to search for the first image by type i am gonna do a google search on that one because it's like 
Somebody has to have done that before. WPF search for control by type. Find all controls in WPF window by type. That's what I'm looking for. Find visual children. I think I have, uh, because of development and running like 10 copies of Visual Studio on top of Big Box and everything else, I'm sure I've used more than 16 gigs um, effectively. Um, but I probably haven't used more than 32, I'm guessing. Sorry, I'm eating. It's in front of me. I can't avoid it. Hey, EA. Yeah, Visual Studio takes a lot of frickin' RAM, too. Alright, so we have some code here that is going to find all elements of a certain type, which is ultimately what I need. I mean, that's super simple. Great. You know what? I think I even have this method already, come to think of it. But this is not... I don't know. Find visual children. I think this might be in... Um, Child view model base. Find visual children of a certain type. Look at this. That's exactly what I'm looking for, except this should be static. And it's not. I'm going to need it to be static because I'm not inheriting. There's no reason why it shouldn't be static. course now I'm going to run into errors I thought I remembered having this method somewhere I sure do of course I got to fix all my errors now Copy that, make it easier. Oops. Oh.
Almost there. All right, so now we should build. Catch up on some comments here. Looks like we did build successfully. Yeah, Echo Shard has definitely proven his uh, game development uh, skills. It's pretty awesome. Taught Unity, that's incredible. Wow. Cheats database incorporated into Launchbox. By the way, Harry, I just checked out your uh, um, like literally like ten minutes before the stream. I checked out your your history uh, startup video, and it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I love it. So speaking of that, I do want to check out. Uh, we can check out Harry's video, and I also want to check out the new City Hunter theme. Um, so I'll probably probably do that here in a few minutes um, after we get this going with the background images. I just want to use this new method to find the image controls. Um, so I don't need all this stuff open. So here we are. We need to, instead of doing this, we need to do I'm gonna leave this in here actually so we'll, we'll do that by default first and then if it's not found if the root is not an image um, then we'll use that method so we're gonna say um, child view model base dot find visual children of type image um, and We need a dependency object. So I'm going to say var root equals user control. Oh, wait a minute. We don't want return. This isn't going to work. What we need is this guy. User control this dot view dot content as dependency object. Come on.
Camel, I was I was referring to uh, Echo Shard's uh, uh, virtual reality big box um, thing, which is really neat. You should check it out. It's on the forums. Thank you, Keltoy. Yeah, we're going to check that out in a second. I'm excited about that. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I was just mentioning we're going to we're going to hop on uh, and check that out on stream. Yes, we are working on image loading performance now, which could significantly help performance in Big Box. And we still have quite a bit of work to do uh, getting this code elsewhere in the app, but we've made good progress here today with the background images, which should help. Yeah, it's there are tons of talented people in our community. It's amazing. You guys are awesome. Percolator, automatic dipper, and tent coffee, your bricky coffee. I I am uh, just. I mean, I love coffee is important to me, but laziness is probably more important to me. So I'm pretty happy with my Keurig as much as you, as much as. I'm I'm probably uh, gonna get ridiculed for it. I use a Keurig. All right, get off my back, guys. Come on. It's tasty coffee, and it's quick and easy, so whatever. All right, so uh, find visual children, and then we have our, our root. So first off, if root equals null, we're going to return. Find visual children of type image, and we're going to feed in root. Yeah, I know that. So var images equals, and then if images dot, is this, what is this, an enumerable? Yeah. Let's turn that into a list. If images dot count equals zero, we're also going to return and image equals images zero. There we have it. In theory, that should get us the first image.
Super nervous. I hear you, Keltoy. Yeah, whenever I release a, 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 a major new release, I get the same way. Yeah, we'll check you out in just a sec, man. We're almost there. I want to uh, test this, and then we'll dive into uh, the new um, City Hunter theme from Keltoy. And I want to show you guys this uh, um, video from Harry as well. want to make sure that images are still loading background images here and they are well of course it's not even testing that code right now I'd have to add something to test that code loving the transitions that that uh, um, critical sit has put into that theme we got background images here as well of course it's all the same background image because that's you know um, I'm just I just have it configured that way in my in my launch box But uh, I think that should help smooth this performance. We got, we got. I, I have other places I need to put this, but it's certainly acting very smooth right now, isn't it? Hopefully that helped. All right. Yeah, Sid has done amazing things. All right, so um, forums. <laughs> Bring it to its knees. You're good at that, Camel. You're good at that. All right, City Hunter 2. If you guys go to the download section on the forums, Harry's uh, History of Gaming startup video is uh, up. That's the newest thing, uh, other than the City Hunter theme, which just came out. I'm going to go ahead and show this to you, though. I think I already have it. Uh, well, I'll drag this over so you can see it. Um, we'll go ahead and download it. I think I already have it downloaded somewhere, but whatever. Hopefully I don't screw up the screen, the stream by downloading this big file, but it's a really, really neat startup video. It's, it's long, which is nice as well. I need to, we still need to do our revamping of the startup videos to support longer videos. It's pretty sweet. I love that graphic there. You'll see that again later at the end of the video. Yeah, there it is. Really neat looking. That's awesome too. So that is the, uh, this is Harry's, Harry Oki, I think is how I how say it. I'm not sure. Um, but that is much appreciated. I love that video. Um, and uh, we're going to be checking out the new City Hunter theme, which I'm excited about as well here. So let me pull that up. Oh, that's, that's great, Keltoy. I'm glad we got the fonts integrated. That's killer. 
I know Econola came out with that a lot a while back. Awesome. All right, so Finds blanket to hide under. It's gonna it's gonna be okay, Keltoy, I promise. Alright. Let me let me do this quick so that I don't uh, scare you too much. Or worry you. I'm gonna do the video one. That's a big download. I hope I hope the stream doesn't mess up while I download this guy. It's big. It's 338 megabytes. Yeah, I, I did I did see the Deadpool intro and it's cool, but yeah, I don't really want to show that on the stream because of the um the the it's like there's a prominent word right at the beginning of that video. <clears throat> The update images bug is still there. What do you mean by that, Illy? Is the stream going down, guys? Should, yeah, I probably should, but you know, I'm lazy. It's almost done anyways. Okay, so let me go grab it. City Hunter 2 video. Move that guy over to my Launchbox themes folder and we'll give it a run. All right, so I'm gonna back out and we're gonna go into options and views and theme is, gotta go all the way back to the beginning. City Hunter 2 video. Looks, ah, you got the nice two there, awesome. Sweet. It faded in. That was cool. Ah, I like the time up there. Sweet. And you've got the new, the smoother video back there too. how that background video fades in now. That's really nice. Dang, this is smooth now. This is so much it's so much smoother with the changes that I made recently. It's great. Let's check out some other views here. This is box. Some of these don't have descriptions. This view is improved. Let 
And there's your, uh, ooh, we have the background video on the, on the, on the uh, cover flow for the first time, which is nice. I like that. And the uh, other cover flow view. I'm gonna go into a console here, because generally I have some better metadata in for the consoles. Let's go to NES. And there is the cover flow view we just saw. Barely a little bit of a hitch in that transition, which I'm not a huge fan of, but that was that's me. I'm not complaining on the theme. That's that's performance for me that I need to focus on. This is the new uh, the new one that isn't really themed yet, and I'm still working on this view. Your standard uh, text list view. And there's your wheel view. This is beautiful. And then we have a background video view, look at that. And then everything fades out, I would expect. I think this is one of Sid's new views. Cool. Sweet. That's pretty neat. Awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. I haven't looped through these views yet. Uh-oh. This might be me though. This is me. Don't blame this on uh, image loader dot load images. We have an object reference not set to an instance of an object. So, and I know, I think I know why this is. It's because I switched too quick and it was while it was loading. So we're gonna have to handle that. No big deal. Who knows whether it's gonna recover. It doesn't look like it's gonna recover from that. So I'll go ahead and kill it. So we're going to have to look for um, null reference issues there, which is easy to do. The date doesn't automatically change unless you back out to the big box main menu. Ah, okay. Yeah, I agree with you, Charco. I know. When changing platform clear logos for a theme, it doesn't work if you just refresh the platform wheel images, but only if you refresh everything, which is annoying. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, I, I know about that bug. Hey, Egmo. Platforms views. Yeah, I was I was going through that, and then I messed it all up. Of course. Don't worry though. That's me. That's the new code I just built today. Okay, Lotus. I'm playing a video full screen. Okay, yeah. I haven't tested that in quite a while.
new startup video. Another one? Wow, okay. We might check that out, Harry. Um, so, I assume the issue that we're running into is simply this. Item is never going to be null, but image, I don't know, what is the, huh, they, in theory they shouldn't be null, I guess, nah, I can't do that, can I, so fine, we'll do this. Known to not be null. So we'll try that. And we'll give that another run and see. I, I'm going to actually start and debug to see if we get that again. Again, ah, okay. So it was different. That's what I expected. I didn't think I, I had it right. So apparently image path is null. Ah, that makes some sense, of course. Okay, so if image path, it should, that should, it should never be getting here in that case. So really in our background view model. We're getting the image. So if this that image path, or if string that is null or empty, this that image path, then return. Of course. That was just my stupid. All right, yeah, there's apparently no images here, which is why it was causing a problem. I'm surprised we hadn't run into that yet, though. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so. I like this view. It's one of my favorites. And then we have the faded out stuff, which is great. And then this is my favorite, favorite view. All right, so looking good. Thank you, thank you so much, Keltoy. Um, loving this. I mean, everything seems smoother. I love the fading in of the background videos. Uh, good stuff. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, I think I am going to end the stream here in just a moment.
If I release a beta today, your wife is going to kill you. <laughs> That's funny. Should we check out Harry's new uh, startup video? Wow, look at this. I'm going to kill my stream again. Here we go. Dang, this looks pretty though. Yeah, the images aren't going to load because I got a big old download going. This is safe, right, Harry? There's no uh, bad language in here or anything? Yoshi. Yeah, I know we need to improve on the delete thing. I, I have caught on to some of that stuff, so we will be getting back to that soon. All right, so we're downloaded. Wow. That's pretty. Wow. Neat. Oh, we're not done either. Oh, is it? I, so, wow. What, okay, what's it going to do now? Dang. Ah. A little bit of James Baker's work there. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. I love it, Harry. Especially with the, the beginning, which of course is what people are gonna see. That's awesome. Very, very cool. Sweet, 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 sweet. Yeah, the the well, startup for me, for example, I love that video. Why don't I put it in my in my launch box? For me, it's gonna go, it's gonna load up super super quick. So we're not gonna barely see hardly any of it, unfortunately. And I, but I still do have it on my list to add a bunch of options for the startup. Um. So. So I put that video in there. Let's see what happens. So yeah, it barely, you barely see any of it, unfortunately. Uh, but we do have an option. I mean, we can go into um, is it videos. Minimum, minimum startup video duration. I can set it to 
you know, like 20 seconds. And that, that will play more of the video. But, you know, we still need more options in there than that, obviously. There's a lot of things we can add yet. <clears throat> yeah, so that's cool. But of course, during development, I don't want to be waiting extra amounts of time to start up Big Box, so. I certainly can't use that for my purposes, but anyways, guys, awesome stream. Um, I'm happy to get that in there, even though I'm, you know, it's probably not that exciting for you guys, but anything we can do to improve the performance is worth doing to me. And I obviously I still have quite a bit more work uh, because we have a lot of other places that are using the um, the old slower image loading method. Um, not just the background images, but the more of that kind of stuff we replace, that's going to really help uh, lower end systems to be able to have a smooth experience. So I'm uh, happy to be doing that stuff. Uh, I really need to get a bait out to you guys. I need to stop making promises because then, you know, I am a liar when it doesn't happen. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry that you guys have had to wait a week for this beta, but I'm going to try and put out the beta today. Um, whether I'm done with all the image optimization stuff or not so that you guys can have a beta because it's been a week. So anyways, thank you, everybody. Have a great week. I will probably stream on Thursday, but I'm not positive depending on uh, what I'm working on development wise. It may work out. It may not. But uh, thank you guys so much. And I will talk to you on Thursday or next week, depending on uh, how things go. Oh yeah, and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to Critical Sid, Keltoy Gale, and Harry Oki uh, for all the awesome stuff here. And so, and everybody else in the community is doing amazing things. There's all kinds of uh, awesome creators on this stream, I'm sure. So thank you guys so much. Have a good one.